everybody, Tom Barnish, Chicago scene, downtown Chicago at the Art Institute of Chicago. And this segment allows me to do really cool things. This might be one of the coolest things I've done, where you get to see a priceless painting without the glass in front of it, without being on the wall, them refitting it for a proper frame. I'm not gonna tell you the name of the painting, but I will tell you it's in a certain movie about a guy that wanders around Chicago on his day off that painting yeah pretty cool i'm gonna go talk to gloria and kirk about the entire process now for the chicago scene so let's head inside the uh, super secret way shall we i'll tell you what it's definitely a different view when there's no glass in front of this wonderful iconic painting and i'm here with my friend gloria and gloria you uh, are part of this project and you have this fancy title that i don't even want to begin to say so i'm going to just let you do the honors if you will and introduce this beautiful painting okay so i'm gloria groom i'm the chair and the david and mary winton green curator in the department of painting and sculpture of europe and you are looking at georges seurat's monumental painting sunday on la grange dash 1884. i'm glad that you said that so i didn't have to butcher it for sure um but Outside of what people have seen in books and classes, even movies here in Chicago, since we don't have the glass in front of it now, what should what can we look at right now that's just a, more of a unique view since we have this opportunity? Sure. Well, one, you can see. <laughs> you can really see the painting because we always see it in reproduction or even in our galleries. You don't, you think about it as a complete, like it was done at one time and we know that it was done in Definitely many not, stages. Right? Right, and you can really start looking at the areas where he's come back in after getting the entire painting down, the composition, this multifigural composition, mm -hmm. for an exhibition that he thought was gonna take place in 85, and then it doesn't. Then he goes back in, and he's really playing with the color theories that he's become more and more involved in, and he starts edging and softening the edges of these figures and adding and all of these little dots that we call them point of east yes for sure uh, that are appearing in these light areas and so that was all done afterwards all of this you know and her dress which was much more columnar and now is more bustle like you know he's right yeah the curves and all around the edges you see this pink and purple and even the dog, you can see where he's added on and it goes over the grass. And so he's softening and playing with the, the, the different colors, but at the same time, he's changing the forms. And so that you may, you may not notice because you're looking at them and you're getting an all involved in this. But when you get without any kind of covering and you are one with the painting, mm -hmm. that's when you start to see the real magic. And that's why we're so excited to have it here for even this short time, but we also want it back in the galleries. Right, so people can see it, right? But yes. this has got to be yes. a treat for you just oh, to is. be able to see it like this and it spend is. time with it. We're oh here in this, um, what's the proper name of this, this space? The room? Conservation Studio, the Paintings Conservation Studio. And this is where you do all this type of work where... This uh, is where the painting conservators really do their magic on and treat. In this case, there is nothing to do. It's just sitting here waiting for a new frame. Right. that we're constructing and um, it there's nothing to be done because this painting is in pristine condition it's been at the art institute since 1924 and it's never been lined it's never been treated and That's it has incredible. no varnish incredible and, yeah yeah it's, it is incredible and yeah. I, one little fun fact that you did tell me about that I've, I've probably heard it at one point or another but forgot is this middle piece right here that doesn't have any dots this young right. lady in the right room. it's like right it's that focal point it's you know ferris bueller's day off it's i was i wasn't going to mention it's ferris Cameron's bueller i was waiting for somebody else too because <laughs> no, i didn't want to be that guy to. you have to because sure. it's like part of the part of it. it's like sondheim ferris bueller right and yeah he just <laughs> leaves that as it was he doesn't go back in and start just that one little edge of dots just really small and then that's it yeah so it's uh yeah so i'm going to swing this around because uh you have some other uh examples right here that you talked about and how it was a progression over time to kind of get to there and these are some one of them's from the art institute here and then there's one on loan one too, them, right? this one is from the art institute one's on loan and these were the the sketches he did on this island which was along the Seine outside of Paris in and then 29 of these and this is what he saw these are the observed these are more impressionist kind of one shot a la prima 
and then he's going to be using those in, in a kind of um, almost like flashcards to figure out the final composition in this monumental painting. And this monumental painting is about to get a new frame and that's where my friend Kirk, who's hiding in the background over there, I'm going to show him and show everybody here, just say, Kirk, we're going to talk to you in a second, but we're going to go down and maybe check out your workshop and we're going to talk about this right here and some of the new uh, techniques that you have for the frame and the daunting task of picking out the right one, right? Exactly. All right, so we're gonna go down real quick to your st uh, studio and then uh, we'll pick it up from there. Sound good? Wonderful. All right, perfect. So there is the new frame in the Frame Conservation Workshop, otherwise known as Kirk's Workshop because you are the man behind this incredible task to get this up on the wall to match the whole thing. No pressure, Kirk. Yeah, yeah. Huh? No, no, it's, it's a humbling experience. I have to say um, we were, we're extremely grateful for the Bank of America to provide this grant that has given us the opportunity to, to relook at the at Seurat's frames and if, particularly the framing of the Grand Jatte. Um, you know, through the course of the museum's history, we've had the painting since 1924 and I think we have done about eight different frames on the piece. And as re new research comes out, new information, we learn more and more about um, what Seurat's hopes for the painting's frame would have been. Unfortunately, he died before uh, a final outer frame could be made. He had an original frame when it was first exhibited at the Impressionist ex exhibit, but later he expanded um, the, the painting. And if you, next time you come into the museum, be sure to see around the painting, you'll see this inner painted frame. And he added that after the painting had been completed, he expanded the size of the painting it's incredible that, that he decided, hey, I want to add some more. You know, I think that's what's Beautiful. really interesting. He got so interested in frames that actually in 1889, he went back and he started to repaint frames on earlier works. And you think about an artist going backwards like that, it must have been a really important to him. Yeah, and sure. I think well, it's the whole story, right? Exactly. And, you know, he's, Seurat, you know, everybody knows him as a famous artist, but as a framer, I think he's one of the most innovative framers that really influenced frames going into the 20th century and also art, uh, how people perceive art Absolutely. in the gallery. And what this white frame, although yeah. it's really simple, it, it was actually the first step to what we think about of a gallery white wall. Mm -hmm. He was providing this flat, white, thin rest before the outside wall came out. He gave up any sort of architecture there's no molding, it's just a flat continuation of the painting. Later on, um, after this point, he actually starts to paint the frame in the pointless style that you see inside. Did he really? And they're amazing paintings, but our painting is right at that point where he's starting to do these innovations. And so we, you know, there's no way we could ever attempt to recreate his genius. And right, that'd be a little exactly, daunting. Exactly, it'd be sure. so much. So what we're trying to do is just reflect the time period when he made this huge transition. From the rest of his life, he always conceived the frame and the painting as one thing, and uh, the execution was done at the same time. But, um, you know, we're at this funny period, and we hope that this time we'll do uh, 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 something that's not only historically accurate, but will also give the painting sort of the color balance and breathing room that it needs. Yeah, and I definitely see that just seeing it on here compared to what we saw upstairs where this will really, I mean, no pun intended, frame it well. I mean, yeah. obviously it's it's just beautiful. And I, you went through the process of trying different things out over a couple of times, right? I exactly. saw some pictures where you were yeah. doing that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, actually the, the frame that he originally made that we know through uh, the painting of the models at the Barnes uh, Collection in Philadelphia, where actually the Grand Jatte's leaning against the studio wall. You know, we've done two versions of that at the museum, and now we know, thanks to research of our own staff and other scholars, that, you know, that that frame would not have fit anymore. It, been, it would have been too expensive to, to reproduce, right, I'm right. sure. Um, but this, we hope, is, is the right approach, I think. Uh, we're, we're hoping that the result is good. And, it, you know, it also extended uh, to the color of the walls and so I think in the new installation you'll also see his preference for a wall color you know he always wanted to either hang on a white wall or a gray, like a gray and so the painting will be hung on a gray wall with a white frame like he had, he had intended and then the transition into his inner frame and then into the painting so hopefully 
you'll, you'll see the, the painting in a really good color balance that he would have preferred. And hopefully it won't be touched again for years and years and years. <laughs> and your, your work along his work will be on the same wall, which is pretty incredible. Well, well, my work is nothing. I mean, the man was a genius. Sure, There's no absolutely. way around it. And I think that's the problem that we've always had with, you know, really uh, showing the grand shot properly is that, you know, you, you can't compete with a mind like that. Absolutely. And here's just, I'm going to swing this over here a little bit, just because this is some behind the scenes stuff. This is the frame on the back and this is how it hangs on the wall. Am I correct in saying that, sure, Kirk? That's right. yeah. yeah. The, um, you know, the, 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 the Schwab preferred these really thin frames, but um, the Grand Shot has always been glazed and it has to carry this a tremendously heavy piece of glass. Sure. And so we had to uh, make a frame on the back that's going to help support that and protect the artwork and keep everything enclosed. So right now we're in the process of uh, cutting the taper so that it matches the, the frame actually. And this will be back up on its in its rightful place soon enough and if people want to come by, what's the website real quick for people? It, it's arctic.edu. Okay. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Kirk. I appreciate you showing me around. Uh, oh, I mean, pleasure. that it's incredible that I get to see this now and this is your, uh, this is your uh, domain down here. So I'm going to get out of here and let you get back to work, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very right, much. I really care. appreciate it. Sure. How cool was that? Am I right? T-B-A-R-N-A-S at WGNTV.com. If you have a suggestion for the Chicago scene, that's T-Barnas at WGNTV.com. I'll see you on the gallery with this one, everybody. Take care.